believe Smoglig is standing in tonight, if I was pronounce it rightly. But, anyway, welcome back everybody. You're watching the Premier League Season 3. My name is Triumph Man, and I will be casting this match between Virtus Pro and Pulse. Now, this is Game 1 in a Best of 3 series here. Now, I've got to say, I think Virtus Pro are probably the favourite. Uh, I, th I feel that they're probably the favourite team here. They've been quite strong in recent times. Also, of course, Pulse have... Uh, Pulse have made some really good plays, but I find it a little inconsistent in, pers in personal opinion. They're a little bit inconsistent, and sometimes they do get on tilt a bit and struggle to get back into the swing of things. But both teams do favor a fairly aggressive style of play, so it's going to be a fairly interesting match. I feel both teams are not going to hold anything back. They're going to clash quite a lot during this match. There we go. Templar Assassin banned. We've also got Darkseid banned. I'm kind of expecting Midi to ban out... The Dirge, just because even though they do play Dirge really well, the issue is Pulse, ever since Star Ladder, they've kind of hated on Dirge. I don't really like playing it all that much. And I'm also kind of expecting Fishbone to get stuck playing... I'm kind of expecting Fishbone to get stuck playing uh, Jikira. Actually, he might not. They have a stand-in tonight, so I don't know. Actually, we'll see what they, how they decide to shuffle the rolls around. I thought... Uh, KSI, there was a stand in for a moment. He Five came in under a wrong three. tag, but however, it sorted itself out. So you see there, he's the one with a different tag instead. Time. But it looks like Pulse are going to spend a little bit of overtime considering this last ban. Now, of course, we've got plenty. Of, we've got Jakira left on the board. Batrider's still there. We've even got stuff. Even got stuff like. Oh, no. Okay, so there we go. Batrider banned. I was about to say Wisp Dyer as well. Both these teams are fairly proficient with Wisp, of course. The CIS teams, you'll see them use the Cast Up Wisp combo quite a bit. And then, of course, Pulse themselves. Mini on the Wisp is quite a scary thing indeed. In fact, we'll see if Virtus Pro allow to slip through. Now, Batrider being banned out there. Will Pulse go for the first pick on Wisp? Nope, they are going to go for the Dirge pick. All right, then. So, I've decided for Wagamama is going to get his chance to run it again. Now, when I saw them run the Dirge pick last time, it was actually a dual lane, if memory serves me correctly. They were running it as a Dirge dual lane. And it was fairly effective. They were up against Trilane, if memory serves correctly. And of course, Undying, the more heroes you throw against him, the more effective Tombstone gets. So if he gets a couple of levels, he gets his Tombstone up and running, gets, uh, if he gets to about level 4 and in okay shape, he's got level 2 Tombstone, he's got his Soul Rip, he's got his Decay, he gets really difficult to shift. And even if you try and bum rush him 2v3 or 1v3, it's very difficult to move him in a lane. And you can really, you do really risk overextending in the horde of zombies and getting picked off in there. Especially the creep wave comes down on top of you as well. However, Bounty Hunter, the next pick there by Virtus Pro. And what will they select next? So Virtus Pro already picking up a fairly gank heavy line. Now Pulse, on the other hand, are going to... This may not be gank so much, but it looks like they're going for that sort of early mid-game push plus team fights. Undying, of course, is fantastic in the early mid-game. He tends to scale off towards the late game, obviously, as Tombstone starts to lose its effectiveness. However, he's still very, very powerful. Radiant team pick. In that mid game, and he really has a good shot of ending things there. Now, Pulse, they have the double pick here. Will we keep it alive? And what will be picked up next? There's the Wisp. Now, the thing is, the Wisp, they can pick a lot of things to go with it. The main thing is, of course, when you've got a team that's renowned for its, you know, Chaos Knight Wisp combo, the thing is, it's the Wisp. The Wisp is a linchpin. You've got to ban the Wisp. The Chaos Knight, it can get replaced by other things. Pudge, Spen, a Nakes, even in a pinch. There's all sorts of things you can throw in there with the Wisp and make it work. It's just you need to have that wisp, and the mobility that it has is really powerful. Now, Virtus Pro, they're going to try and gank a lot, and the thing is, if they, they're they going to have to go after the wisp and whoever he's babysitting quite a lot, because otherwise, they really run the risk. Every time they gank, wisp is going to grab his partner, and they're going to come down on the top of the uh, whoever they're trying to gank and counter gank really quickly and swiftly, and just try and turn the odds in their favor. And it looks like Virtus Pro, they've got a similar idea there, picking up the Tinker. I am worried, though, Tinker really won't be able to put his global edge to use. Even if he gets those fast travels, it's going to be very easy for Wisp plus another hero to pick him off. And Virtus Pro now, I would not be surprised if we see Chaos Knight banned by them in the near future. Possibly even see Sven get banned along there as well. Sven and Wisp are definitely very, very scary. And especially since we have Undying here, in fact, they might actually go. I think this was probably going to be more dual lane. Oh, wow, okay. Magnetor actually getting banned out there. I will... Hopefully, we can get an interview with Pulse afterwards, and uh, can I ask them exactly why they banned the Magnetor? Seems like they are somewhat worried about it. Now, the Wisp, of course, keep it, I think when we see when we see oh, Pulse play Wisp, they do try and throw him into the jungle, get him farming that jungle, pulling, stacking, that sort of stuff, and farming. They do not try and... They 
do try to avoid him on the hard support with the wards, the counter wards, that sort of stuff. I believe they will shut most of that, most of those duties over to Keeper of the Light. Now, right now, Pulse have a fairly strong global presence, of course. They have Keeper of the Light who can drag people in. And I'm just waiting to see, actually, if uh, we see Disruptor banned out as well. Because one of the better ways to disrupt a Wisp combo is the fact that you just throw in a Disruptor. And every time they teleport in is you glimpse his partner. And if it's a Chaos Knight that comes in the Wisp, you just glimpse the Chaos Knight, send it back to wherever it came from. It's very Ten frustrating stuff remaining. to try and teleport in against that. So I would not be surprised if Five we see a Disruptor banned here or that, or actually... Uh, actually, no, Pulse are unlikely to pick it. They've already got Keeper of Light and we need to get something to take the mid. Unless they're actually planning to dual mid, that is also a possibility. We'll see. They could even be sending Undying there, possibly. And Chaos Knight actually being banned out by Pulse. Maybe they're going for a Pudge then. Virtus Pro also banning out the Juggernaut there. And what we see, oh, well, the question is what is going to be played with Wisp here? What are they picking up to come with it? Could we see a Pudge? Could we see a Sven even? No, we'll find out in a second. But Virtus Pro with one last ban left after Pulse. What are Pulse going to knock out next? And I've got to say, I'm fairly. I think Tinker is not going to go for March Machines here. He's most likely, I think, going to go for Travels with the Laser and the Rockets, just because they have the Bounty Hunter. I think they will want to maximize their early gank potential rather than push potential, especially with Undying on the other team. You don't really want to try and push it, just group up and push in under those towers. And of course, against Wisp and whoever he's picking up, you don't want to be trying to solo push towers either because it's very easy just to teleport in behind and gank. So I think he will be going, I think they're going to try and partner up a lot and just send out a Dying lot of ganks there. And Disruptor the next man there, no real surprise. Pulse of course, you'd, like I said, Disruptor so good at dis basically disrupting the Wisp combo. You just send back whoever teleports in with it. Another final ban here from Virtus Pro. What we've actually seen, when the Wisp gets picked up, I've actually seen things like, how you see this massive list of bans, there's Chaos Knight, Sven. Pudge, all these bands, one after the other, just trying to keep them away from the Wisp, when in reality, if they were worried about the Wisp combo, they should have just banned the Wisp and only wasted one ban on it. And I'm just thinking, I mean, they've got, they could go Sven. I really feel like, actually, Slaughter is even a choice. The attack speed for him is a really big boost there, and of course, the damage reduction as well, really nice, because they do get into the thick of things as well. As well as the speed increase means he can save his sprint for later, and not have to pop it in the middle of a fight. I would actually really like to see a Slaughter go with the Wisp, but of course, he's not bad at ganking either. Burst, he's got a good stun, and of course the damage there from... The extra damage from his Amplifier damage is really, really nasty stuff. But now this fourth pick for Pulse, what are they going to snap up here? Virtus Pro actually decided to ban out the Lashrak instead. Interesting stuff there. Five seconds remaining. Why is Invoker not banned or picked anymore? He's still good. He still gets picked every now... Okay, of course, the Tiny is getting picked up. Of course, Tiny, the other usual suspect to go with Wisp. Of course, taking his baseball bat to his enemies. And Wisp allowing him to get in. Uh, that said, though, I really would like to see a slider in there. But, of course, Tiny being picked up the Wisp. Common stuff. But, why is Invoker not banned? He's still good. And especially when we see offensive trialings, Invoker is often still played the Exhort Invoker because he's another... He's a safety net to help seal the deal. Because if you screw up an offensive trial, it's it's Ten, very much lights out. It's really hard to recover when you mess that up. I'm going to say, though, I, I remember he says, I believe his Quas Wex combo got a little bit of a nerf, so it might be what we, why we don't see him so much anymore. But the Exhort is definitely still, very much still uh, viable. Virtus Pro now, fourth pick. They've got one, two solos there. Rubik, probably a support in this case, I feel. Tinker, I think, is going to take the solo mid. So they're looking for a primary farmer. The question is, I think... I don't think they're going to dual mid. Tinker is kind of level dependent, so they're going to give him a solo mid. If they throw a dual mid against him, obviously, then they'll probably try and rotate something there. I'm still not dead sure how Pulse are planning to lane this. I think they're probably hoping Tiny can end up in a 1v1 against Bounty Hunter in the offlane. Wiz can spend most of his time pulling. I think we're possibly going to see Keeper of Light and Undying roll together in the top lane, which to me says Pulse are likely to try and pick up a solo mid as their Omni final Knight. choice here. Omni Knight is being picked up here Please by Virtus Pro. Pick. And, well, I'm not sure. Well, we haven't seen a lot of Omni Knight. The extra defensive buffs, of course, really going to help him out in the middle of a team fight. And, of course, Omni Knight incredibly hard to push against, especially when Pulse don't have a natural Diffusal Blade carrier. It's one of the things you do want to pick up against Omni Knight is the natural Diffusal Blade uh, carrier. 
and it really helps deal with his repel and more importantly guardian angel being able to pop that in the middle of the fight when a team is basically bound on physical damage kind of screws him over Murana is the final pick here for pulse so i think we're going to see pinoy take Murana to the solar mid mini probably wind up in the jungle and tiny will be mostly soloing his lane against the bounty hunter i think we'll see a keeper light and undying together Just looking on this one now. The final pick though for Virtus Pro. I think Omni Light's mostly going to be soft support here. They're going to try and give him a bit of cash. Rubik is going to take the primary support. Tinker solo mid. Bounty under solo bottom lane, which means they're looking for a final pick. And it's going to be Razor. They're picking up some. Oh wow, okay. So we're going to have a really tanky lineup here. Razor, of course, naturally builds himself into a tank. And then, of course, NS will be backing him up there with the Omni Light, making him even harder to get rid of and focus down in the fight. This is definitely going to be an interesting fight indeed, especially if they manage to steal all that damage off Tiny as well. But anyway, let me bring up who's playing what. So for the Radiant side here, Pulse, Mini is playing Wiz, Wagamama on the Undying, Pinoy playing Mirana, Smogalig there on the Tiny, and Fishbone playing Keeper of the Light. Meanwhile on the Dire side for Virtus Pro, we have Ammon playing Razor, Chaos side playing Rubik, Bandit playing the Bounty Hunter, XXX playing Tinker, and NS playing the Omni Knight. NS, of course, usually plays support. There we go. Okay, so he will be playing some kind of support role. Tinker rushing a bottle, most likely solo mid. Meanwhile, Razor has actually bought up there. We'll be taking the safe lane. And then, of course, Bandit in the suicide lane there. Then we go Wagamama heading to the top lane. Backed up by Keeper Light. Marana. Pinoy taking Marana to the mid. And there we go. Mini. He will be, he will be in this bottom lane somewhat. He might pop out every now and then to try and har help harass Bounty Hunter. For the most part, he's just going to be pulling through here her. to that camp, and then he'll be trying to pull to this camp to farm as much as he possibly can. Try and get the early mech and that sort of thing. He's going to leave most of the support, I feel, to Keeper Light. That's when I, when I see Pulse play, it's generally what they do. And you see Keeper Light, in fact, is fairly light on items there. Now, in this case, I don't know how much of an impact these guys... I think these guys, they're not looking to get kills. They're mostly going to play fairly defensive, and especially... With Wagamama, it's fairly defensive. Of course, you don't want to try and charge against Keeper Light as well. With a well-placed Illuminate, it can cause all sorts of havoc at the right moment. That said, they do have an Omni Knight there. Now, I feel like Omni Knight's going to spend most of his time in the jungle trying to get his farm off the creep. And it's going to be KSI doing most of the supporting here because Omni Knight, of course, again, relatively level dependent. And a good guess there on where the ward was. They saw them pop up to here and then suspiciously suddenly back off. They figured, you know what, you must have dropped the ward. See, double damage there on the Bounty Hunter, though. Could do some serious harassment on Mini. Mini throwing down a counter ward already. And Bandit actually just going to sit here and block the initial spawn. And Mini now looking for Bandit. Still has his double damage, although he's watching out here. He's just going to try and chill. In fact, you might even see him. You can actually duck inside here in the trees and hide there. Mini now going to roll back. And now he's going to start his stack get ready to farm. And there we go. He's actually trying to stack the creep camps now using those orbs. There we go. Using his triple stack method. Unfortunately, of course, this camp still being blocked there by Bandit. He will at least get the double stack, but as long as he continues to block this one, he actually can't initially do the pull anyway. He's up at the top lane. The Wagamama having some damage stolen there by Static Link. And there we go. Kanasai is indeed doing the majority of the support. And Omni Knight, there we go, is doing the pulling. And actually... Fairly sure he was going for that pull and made a mistake there. Because that wasn't a stack. So yeah, it looks like he was going for the pull. But here we go. They're going after Bandit. Bandit now being spotted up. They don't have the speed to run him down though. And he will manage to back off and will potion up. And now he knows this area here is a bit of a no-go. It's a no-fly zone for him. Meanwhile, in mid, Mirana 6-3. and 5-1 five and there for Tinker. Both of them holding off fairly well. Tinker, no. Actually leveling up March Machines. I thought he'd be going for Rockets and Laser. Just to uh, combo better with the Bounty Hunter, of course, the game pitch from Bounty Hunter decided not to, though. And there we go, this time round, NS actually managing to secure the pull. Small League's actually out of a... Uh, I'm just going to call him Small. Small's actually out of mana now, so he can't really threaten Bounty Hunter. And Bounty Hunter now is going to get fairly aggressive. Every time Junata's up, he's probably going to go in and harass, or at least last hit. He's not too worried about getting ganked. There we go, finally a creep camp there for Mini to actually pull. Region. And we go. Courier coming out. Going to drop the bottle there. XXX going to pick that up. Mar Meanwhile, Marana has she got hers. Yet yeah, almost has enough mana there for it. 
Keep one level illuminate, one level chakra, normal stuff. And there we go. The pulls are starting to get annoying, I feel, for them. There's two creep waves in a row that they're missing now, being pulled and stacked against. Now, Wagamama, well, they're going to try and jack this here. And, of course, Fishbone with the Illuminate. Fairly easy for him to come and jack a couple there. But here comes Omni Knight moving in. The heal gets dropped in there as the damage being stopped for Wagamama. He's now boxed in. 3v1. He's trying to back up here. Another Illuminate going to go through there. Channeled out, however. It's going to do a lot of damage here to Razor, but they should get the first blood. And there's the damage from Razor. Stealing all of that static damage. You see, he's got 112 bonus damage. There's the Rel Telekinesis. He's going to pick up Wagamama and pick him off there. Unfortunately, NS proving to be quite problematic. They're not able to get through his heal as well as his repeller, the inner light being too strong. KSI, though, taking some serious damage. We'll need to back off and go and heal up. NS also chewing through most of his mana pool as well. We'll want to pick up those arcane boots ASAP. Okay, is he actually harassed? What is he actually going to max out? He is maxed out at level 2. He will be going for 1 and laser. Probably max rocket 2nd after he maxes out the March machines. Probably won't see him get his ultimate until about level 8, level 9. Once he picks up. Once he picks up his boots of travel, there's no real reason to have it otherwise. And as well as his mana regen. Because without boots of travel, you can't really spam the rearm all that much. It's kind of expensive. Then it's just going to pick off some pull creep there. Again, another stack there from Wisp. Not actually. Apparently, that's been blocked up by something. In fact, I can even see it. I think it's possibly a bug with the Guardian Orbs. I may have detonated incorrectly and I actually left some kind of invisible gadget there. He's been picked up by Omni Omni Knight, though, rolling back. He's not going to get involved there with him. Meanwhile, on farm wise down the bottom, it looks like Tiny 20 and 10. Not quite on track. A little, in fact, all the heroes are slightly behind on their farm there. Bounty Hunter 6 and 4, obviously, not having the best of times. Every, now the mana is back up Tiny. He's got enough to combo with. Bounty Hunter has to play very defensively. He gets too close to last hit, of course. Smile can just jump out and try and combo him there. Meanwhile, on the top lane, and we go fairly stock standard stuff from Wagamama there. As well as Keeper of Light, just picking up fairly normal builds there. You'll probably see Wagamama max out the tombstone now. There we go, another Eliminate just being used to pick off this creep at a distance or just harass him back. Not actually managing to get a whole lot there at all. In the mid lane, Tinker being forced back by Pinoy. Pinoy now picking up early boots. I think he's got a bottle coming out, maybe? There it is, bottle and boots headed out right now. And there we go, they're going to make a run on Bandit. However, they don't have any invis detection. It's a nice attempt, however. Small didn't quite manage to get down the stun in time. They will manage to harass Bandit, though. Bottle being used up in mid. XXX also... There. Oh, wow, he actually did... He actually did get much... He actually did get rearm at level 6. This is somewhat unusual. It does happen every now and then, but it's not particularly useful. It's because you see the 150 mana, 165 mana, without boots to travel, to constantly travel back and forth about... It's not rearm. You cannot really spam all that much. I find I see oh, just no. the extra level and rockets at level uh, level six instead. Let's see a pause there for a second. Undying actually pausing the game there for one moment. Tiny now disconnecting. Just come back in in a second. What has he picked up there? Okay, he's got his brace. He's got his drums of endurance rest. He should have that finished up in a second. Meanwhile, up in the top lane, we'll see what KSI is doing. Nope, still fairly poor there. Goldwise, fairly even. Same for experience. Very little deviation there for both teams. Item-wise, nobody, nobody's really picked up anything massive, although Razor is actually getting a few early items. Here we see he's picked up his phase boots. He's giving him a lot of extra damage to the early phase, plus mobility, of course. He's actually maxing out the static link, as we can see right now. Only one level in his pulse, as well as his passive. In fact, did he? No, all right, he hasn't actually done it. He hasn't actually skilled up his level 6 yet. Meanwhile, I'm kind of betting here. I'm probably going to see Tiny just... Well, he's got the mana for it now. He could actually run. He could actually make a run here on Bandit. Bandit is somewhat vulnerable. I think Tiny may be getting ready once they unpause to just hurl a combo into Bandit's face. Let's see, there. how much is he on? 451... be 410 before damage it's about 300 damage tiny could potentially kill him with a couple of auto attacks yeah 86 damage there on the auto attacks and he does actually have the potential if he can get two auto attacks in i think bounty hunter will die 
If he can, even if he doesn't do the correct wombo combo, if he just hits him with a toss and the stun, I think he has the potential to take him out there. The thing is, especially with the uh, Shadow Walk's fade time, of course, what he can actually do is he can throw the stun, not actually use the toss. He can actually throw the stun and then immediately start auto attacking Bounty Hunter as he goes into the fade time, because you see it's only level 2. He's still got a 0.75 second fade time. That's plenty of time for Tiny to actually, actually hurl a creep at him. The creep will still track him. He goes to the Invis, the creep will track, and it will and send AoE, so it'll still hit him and damage him. Hopefully Tiny can get back in here. Won't delay the match for too long, but I do think... Okay, once he gets back in, though, we'll definitely take an eye on that one. I think the top lane is not going as well as Fishbone and Wagamama want it, though. So it looks like the unconventional picks here, the Omni Knight in the jungle, and then the Razor here have really, I think, really thrown a span into the works. I really feel like they were planning for something a bit squishier. Something slightly squishier in the top lane, and some squishy supports like Rubik as well as something along the lines of Shakira if he wasn't banned. That sort of stuff that Tombstone is really good against. Not something like Omni Knight, who is really difficult to shift in a fight, and of course he's in a light there. His purification there, as well as the repel, is so hard to get rid of. I think using a World of Warcraft turn there. Okay, so that unpause. Let's go and check on Tiny. I get the feeling we might see something here. Or not. You see, Bandit was kind of expecting something as well. Immediately hit his invis. Small did not even bother. Never mind then. You see Wagamama though with Fishbone, they're really worried. They have no idea what's going on here. They don't want to go head first into a check, especially since if somebody gets hit by Telekinesis, it's going to be very easy for them to burst him down. Fade Bolt, they've got the Pulse. The Pulse is only level 1, but of course, Purification as well. Really nasty stuff. There we go, another Illuminate being charged up. It's going to harass a little bit, pick up some creep. Doesn't quite manage to hit Airmen there. I don't know what they're going to do about this because they, I think they may need, even need to rotate some of them away from there because they're not really achieving much at all in the mid lane. Oh, no, it's actually headed down to mid. Changed his mind, going back to top now as well. About to have to take a trip back to base. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, what does Pinoy decide to pick up? 600 gold in the bank, 27 and 9, it's doing all right on farm. 38 and 19 there for Tiny, 36 and 18 for the Razor. really picking up anything just yet. This mid game is definitely going to be interesting. I think I feel like they wanted to make something happen in the mid game, but with the power of Razor in the mid game as well as the fact that they have got the Omni, I just and as well as the fact of course Tinker, who's going for March minions, I don't really feel like the Radiant side can make good pushes in the mid game. They're actually going to be forced I feel to go fairly late just because Tinker is going to be really really good at stalling, especially since they don't want to split up either. They can't really split up a push with Bounty Hunter ready to try and pick anybody off at any given moment. Mini is going to be really careful at this point in time. He can't really use the jungle all that much. He's a little bit too squishy. Very easy for Bandit to try and get rid of Bandit there. One level in Janata, two in his Windwalk, and two in his Shuriken Toss. Oh no. The arrow going to go in. Will it hit? No, it won't. XXX. Unfortunately, slightly obvious there. XXX just neatly sidestepping it, not even bothered by it. It's Bounty Hunter, though. Still sitting around Invis. Has picked up a poor man's shield. And now Omni Knight headed towards the mid lane. Oh, nope. Changed his mind again. Headed back. Welcome, Mama, now. It's good ward here. It makes them not only does this really allow them to see any incoming TP ganks from this position, but it also gives an eye on whether or not they start pushing up. If, if the Radiant Heroes, they move into the jungle. It's very easy for the dire sports to come and crack down. Oh, they dive in on the bounty hunter. The bandit gets picked off there. That sudden strike there from the wisp and the tiny. No, they did not teleport. Just use brute force. Just charge in there and picked off bounty. I believe bounty hunter probably. Unfortunately, bounty hunter I think made the mistake of teleporting back in and uh, tiny just instantly comboing him down with the help of wisp. Maybe he made his position kind of obvious where he was teleporting back in, and they just probably threw a whole bunch of stuns at the location and took him out. You know, just catching up on farm there with the nukes. Ennis, every now and then, Ennis drops into this mid lane and then doesn't really do a whole lot. He shows up here and then... Yeah, I'm not sure if they're expecting some kind of attack in mid, or if he's just out of stuff to pull. 
Every now and then, I think he's actually oh, okay. Here, the whisper expected gang to come in. March machines get popped in there. Smaller guy jumping in now. Can we see the healing, uh, the purification get dropped? He's pop repel down though. They toss in there from Tinker, not doing anything. Laser will finish up Tiny, and it looks like they were expecting the NS, expecting the gank there on the mid lane. That was a hell of a read there. It's like, oh, is this a, I guess the conversation was, okay, Tiny and Wisp, they've hit level 6. They're going to try and gank someone. It's either going to be mid or top. Let's hedge our bets, send somebody mid. And I'm going to say, without that repel, XXX probably would have died. So there we go. Now we know exactly what he was up to there. Hey. Maybe they've been watching Pulse. They knew exactly when they were showing up and what they were doing. Razor now 400 gold in the bank. Courier up to okay, and it's picked him up. A vitality booster. Okay, maybe it hasn't then. It's going back to base with it. Does look like he's trying to. Pick, he's possibly trying to pick up an early Vanguard. Although that said, Vanguard's sort of become less popular as of late, especially with the Vanguard nerfs. This has been popular for a long time. This could in fact just be a ring of health. No, it's going to be the full Vanguards. Never mind. I was going to say it might just be a flat vitality booster, and then he's going to pick up the ring of health and turn it into a pipe afterwards because of course Razor does like to get those tank items and it wouldn't hurt against the Radiant lineup either they do have a fair amount of magic damage and we're going to see the stun thrown in there the toss as well just going to do some damage to Bandit harass him and drive him back Wisp on the other hand has headed up to the top lane looks like they're going to mix things up a little bit I just don't know if it kills Razor 900 health at the moment Decay as well two stacks of Decay on him so he's got a fair amount of health normally even now with his static link as well. Ask is going to be hard to run down. There's another stack of decay being thrown in for good measure. His supports are a fair distance off. If the radiant now charge him right now, I managed to bring him down. This could be problematic. Another decay thrown in on there. Razor though, hanging back. Wisp now has headed back to the bottom lane. Here we go. I might see Wisp teleport back up the top lane in just a second here. Actually, they're going to charge it to Bounty Hunter. Bounty Hunter though, they pop the dust. Can they run it in the tether there? Pop once again. Dodges a stun. However, the damage might be enough. There's a toss as well. They will bring him down with an auto attack. And now NS attacking them. He's trying to teleport out. He will teleport Tiny home safely. However, Wisp on the other hand is about to die. Unless he can pull off some really fancy shenanigans. In fact, actually... Possibly, if he teleports out immediately with a scroll, he might get away, although Tinker is here as well. Meaning now headed straight back into him, tethering down to the creep, trying to run for his life. And he will actually manage to escape, but I was about to say he could actually teleport out, but no, he went for the tether and just barely gets away there. 80 health. Tinker's laser, unfortunately, too low level to do anything. If you throw down marching machines in the middle of that, maybe they could have got a kill, but in the end, he decided... Wasn't going to waste him out. I think he probably expected Wisp to run that direction, but Wisp knew where he was going. After creep waves, a nice little escape there from Mini. Very well played. Meanwhile, though, it looks like Razor now charging up his static, but once again, he's got a lot of damage there. He almost instantly destroys the tombstone there. Another decay thrown, but here comes Pinoy. Can he land an arrow here? No, it's on court, and he's already managed to miss the damage there from Wisp. The orbs, it's enough. The auto attacks takes 4v1, but they do manage to bring down the Razor. And Illuminate going to get sent through there to push the lane as well. Mini also going to heal himself up off a potion. They're not bothering to tether with anybody else there. They're going to bring down the mid tower. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, there's a pick off there. They get the stun in as well. Mirana landing the arrow there on Tinker. An easy combo. Lumex is being spammed out there. There's the decay once again being thrown on NS. NS now charging after them. Wagamama backing up. KSI also shot to reinforce. Also, here we go. Raise the teleporting back to the top lane now. Mirana now, Mirana to the bottom lane, going to farm that. Bounty Hunter still farming that. Bounty Hunter hasn't really been active yet. I'm surprised he actually hasn't gone out to gank, like support the top lane, throw down some tracks, that sort of stuff. Get some damage rolling, or get some kill, track kills rolling there. We see mid lane though, picked off Tiny, going to hit that down there with his fist. Going to push that down. And of course Tiny's toss does work against the tower as well. We see Rune pop up there at top Rune, but nobody there with a bottle to pick it up. 
KSI, has he picked up anything yet? Not really, gonna pick up the items. Let's see, have a look, Tinker Boots of Travel are finished up. Let's see a Midas, an early Midas there on Pinoy as well, has gone for... Wow, okay. It's kind of going for late game there, another Luminate getting tossed through. We'll see if Pinoy can actually go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I think this is the right choice for him to play late game, try and farm as hard as possible. Especially with Razor. Razor is farming well. They can't really push all that easily early on against the Omni Knight. So I feel like this is the correct choice. Omni Knight there. Three levels in in Purification. Two levels in Repel. None in Purification. Uh, none in uh, Degen Aura just yet. See Bounty Hunter though. Headed to the mid lane. I think he's just going to try and leech some experience here. Can't really set up the kill on his own. Doesn't have enough mana to do that. Just going to throw it in the track and keep an eye on where they're headed to. Well, top lane, we see Razor up there, KSI as well. Track, double track there, there's a repel there on Bounty Hunter. Bounty Hunter now making a run there on Smull. Smull, they're going to teleport, they go to the top lane, Tinker now is in trouble, it's stunned, goes out. They will get the kill there, however, can Tiny and uh, Wisp get away in time? Razor now causing a lot of damage, Wisp is going to get picked off, that's going to cancel the teleport back. The speed is allowing to run them down, there's a the damage still, however, he's going to be spotted by track. There is no escape for Tiny, gets picked off, gives away some track money. Nicely done there by Bandit and a decent kill indeed. Meanwhile, up at the top lane, we've got Keeper of Light pushing up here. Can Kansai sneak in and deny? Or is that the Fade Bolt going to cause some damage there? However, there's the Decay. There's Wagamama healing up with the Soul Rip, charging after KSI. Now KSI gets taken out. However, Fishbone will get taken out as well. Dives in too far, too deep against the tower. However, this will ensure that they get the tower kill. And they pick off a kill earlier as well. So in the end, a decent trade for them. Now Mirana headed back to the bottom lane to help support. Is lower mana. Has got enough for both spells in just a second. We're causing some serious damage there. There's a purification though. We're getting spotted up there by a track race. He's going to try and clear out this creep wave. Teleport's coming in. We've got two heroes teleporting in right now. An arrow in there from Rana, not really hitting an of anything. And the speed up there from Wisp. Wisp now going for the time. There's a combo. It fails. Oh, hit the wrong target. Purification heals up bandits. Now we've got the retreat there from Mini. Mini trying to get away. Going to try and suicide the creep. Going to try and back off. Tries to tether over the top of the trees. Gets cleaned up there by Razor. And now we're going to charge in there by Small Small. There's the arrow. Going to hit Ennis. Ennis so popping his ult. Unfortunately, Guardian Angel going to prevent them from taking them out there, as it looks like also Fishbone has to back up as well. Ammon going to chase after his ult as well, going to bring him down there. And a good series of trades there for Virtus Pro. They pick off three heroes for none in return. And a teleport coming in here. Tinker also returning to the fight. They should be able to push down this tower with only Dirge left to defend. Dirge is probably best off just leaving. There's not much you can do about it. There we go. And he has actually maxed out Decay instead, decided not to go with the Tombstone, interestingly enough. Bottom tower being destroyed, Marana picking up her Blade of Alacri. I'm just wondering if she's going to go for a Diffusal Blade. Now I said earlier that uh, Pulse did not have any natural Diffusal Blade carriers, and that was before Marana was picked. Marana is actually not too bad with the Diffusal Blade, it's the item that works nicely on her. It's not as great as uh, a couple of other heroes, especially like illusion based heroes and stuff like that, but at the same time it's not terrible either. When you're mostly getting it for the purge, it adds nice stats to Marana, she can always use it, and of course purge is always useful. Yeah. More fishbone, can we push the top lane solo there? I'm just gonna check the gold shot. 2k advantage there for the rating. They did we're building a bit of a lead, being brought back now by the die side. You see the teleport in there, they're going for the gank right now. Can they pick anybody off? The stun goes down on KSI. Uh, the ports are coming, arrow flies out as well. Doesn't hit anything, Razor now getting involved. Pops his ult. Small trying to go toe to toe there with Ammon. The stether in, they get the stun. Wisp though, teleports out at the last moment. And they fail to get the kill there. They kill him for Omni Knight. That must be frustrating. That was so, kill so close to getting the kill there on Razor. And Razor manages to skulk away on 100 health. Pinoy in the middle lane there, about to be harassed by Bandit, a Bandit changes mind, there's a BKB being bought up by Bandit as he throws down the track. So he actually takes teleporting back to base, he's going to pick up his mana before flying out once again. Bandit now just grabbing farm in the middle lane, Omni Knight now moving into the jungle, that's a lot of force there 
Omni Knight moves in. He's going to chase Smile off there. There's a tether up. Also, Razor is here as well. Razor, they're going to move in. Repel there on Omni Knight. The tether, they're being snapped as well as the Static Link also being snapped. However, now Wisp in some trouble. Going to be chased down here. Tinker here as well. There's the Rockets. Laser, you know, just an auto attack to finish off. Murata moves in. Murata, though, unable to bring down these guys by herself. Also being chased in there by Bandit himself. Heal him there on Airman. So here's some harass. Oh, no. It's just Bandit attacking Creep. Never mind. Meanwhile, though, Keeper Light like, pushing the top lane by himself. See an urn being picked up there by Omni Knight at the moment. And Fishbone also working on. Okay, interesting choice there. Fishbone is actually getting mech. Normally we see Wisp being given the early farm when it's played by Pulse. However, they have decided against that. And they have gone with Wisp doing a lot of the supporting here. He's picking up the consumables. Static Link wants to get on Pino. He doesn't lose that much damage though. How much did he lose? Let's have a look. I don't think he lost any there at all. So he managed to break that quick. NS now moving in as well as he's backed up there. Tiny though coming in from behind. Can they get a stun? And they pick up NS. Nicely done. They had to get him first as well before he just heal, repel, and Guardian Angel. Can they get the tether stun? And Razor is naturally quite speedy. It looks like he may actually get away, although there's the damage being stolen. Small now changing his mind about this, trying to get away. Mirana now. Hobby or old, but they pick off Wisp and Tiny. He's been spotted up here. And they're going to throw down marching machines. Well, Tiny now trying to escape. Going to duck in the trees. We'll need to teleport out. There we go. Popping his teleport and going to try and escape here and heal up back in the fountain. Arrow being sent out there by Marana, not finding anything though, and we see Emin <laughs> causing a lot of havoc with his damage still. Fishbow now is trapped in there. Thought he was being sneaky. Virtus Bro had other plans. Surprise, Blood Sex. Keep it like just sitting there. Yeah, you know, I'm a ninja. I'm a sneaky ninja, and no, no, you're not. Sorry, Fishbone. BP, they see all. And there we go. Marana did indeed get the Diffusal Blade there. She got a 21 minute minus in Diffusal. That's not, and Treads, not too bad. It's actually pretty decent. I'm bring up the gold per minute at the moment. 370 gold per minute. Could definitely be a lot worse. There we go. Marshall Machines getting popped in. Alt there from Dirge. Throws out the Decay. Guardian Angel being popped in. But Omni oh, He gets brought down by a toss though. And now they're going to try and run down. Uh, Bounty Hunter is actually quite tough there. Oh, there's a Purge knocking off that Guardian Angel. They're going to try and run him down still. But here comes Razor. He's chasing them down from behind. Pinoy now likely to fall. Pinoy gets picked off. There's another track kill. Wish now the next one to fall. There's another track kill. And unfortunately, Virtus Pro, they're all over this at the moment. 9 to 15, and track kills galore. I would say they're definitely going to be starting to pick up their goal. There we go. 1k advantage, and it's just going to start growing and growing unless Pulse, they do something about this. I feel like they need some more stuns. Because right now, they're just getting picked off. At the moment, they're really relying on the tether stun, which isn't always landing. They can't, as we saw before, they couldn't run down Razor with it. They might actually have to start going the other way around with the tether stun. Rather than having Tiny try and run them down, is to have the tether pop and then have Tiny actually throw the wisp at them. It's also one way to do things. Of course, this does limit the damage from the combo. Bone is going to take the mid there. Tiny now finishing up his Argonim. So this is where things get dangerous. Because Tiny once he gets his Argonim, it's really, really hard. And this is where Razor may have to watch out, although he's very tanky, and it looks like he's possibly going for a Manta style fairly soon. Smile though, thinking on a gank there. Looks like the target is Tinker. That's it. Here comes Bounty Hunter. He spotted them up. He knows something's up. <laughs> I thought he was about to snipe the courier there for a second. <coughs> Bandit deciding against it, decides to back up. There we go, trying to run him down. Not going to happen though. And there we go, this is what I mean about the tiny tossing in the wish. Well, I don't know if he meant to toss in the wish, I think he's just trying to CS instead. But if you hurl the wisp in, you can actually get the tether stun down initially. Yeah, the XXX there, cast off a second. NS, Guardian Angel up in 10 seconds. They are going to put a push on this top tower. Meanwhile, Mirana can solo push the bottom tower by herself. 
while her teammates just defend here. And again, Bounty Hunter sneaking around and just throwing down these tracks, prepping the fight. Another tether there on Tiny. Teleport back, of course, Tinker actually is teleporting back to Ven, of course, he can't afford to move back and forth between the lanes. And there we go, there's that static link once again, tether away though. And ult being popped by Wagamama, in the end, ultimately, the tombstone as well, really wasted. Let's do those couple of spells, however, by the time this lane pushes down again, they may well be back up once again. Marana now rotating the mid, continuing to farm here, not too worried about the push as of yet. I'm actually thinking about ganking Marana, I think. Found it there as well. Although here comes the giant team. Found it. Oh, wow. There we go, putting that cleave to work, just gonna chew through these ancients. with his baseball bat. There we go. Ancient's dead. 1,400 more gold in the bank. There another Illuminate coming through there. So the K once again. But here we go. The shield up there from Repel. And there we go. Airman not even caring. Just going to cause some damage to this tower while he can. Kind of why I feel they need some more stuns because Razor is just doing whatever, especially with Repel. Razor just does whatever the hell he feels like. And as soon as he gets some, as soon as you see those stuns come at him, he just pops. He pops Repel on him, and they just can't shut him down. And for the person who's oh, they're to teleport in there. They get a stun down this time though. There's the toss. We see the follow-up stun there as well from Murata and an easy kill on the Tinker. But for the person asking in the chat, asking why no Blink Dagger on Tiny. This is the normal way to play Tiny in a competitive match at the moment. So you use him as a semi carry with a Wisp, or even without the Wisp, and it's just to get the Arganim Scepter and play with that. It's not to say that uh, Tiny's uh, well, Blink combo is bad, it's just that it's not as popular anymore. See Mirana there popping her Illusion runes. The teleport's coming in, they get the stun down there on Bounty Hunter, who gets caught out there. Follow up stun there from. Tiny as the arrow goes out there from Rubik who stole it however it manages to impact on a creep so no damage done there and it looks like the Radiant will manage to back off successfully without getting picked off. Mama still trying to farm up anything up here. It looks like he's going for an Arganum Scepter as well. I fear that he will get it too late to make it end of any relevance though. The arrow go out, gonna hit a creep once again. Ray's now coming, there's the static link Marana now leaping away trying to break it. Losing 28 damage. Big boy out. There's a Lincoln Spear for... Oh, wow, okay, he's going really tanky. I thought he'd be going for Manta Hex. He's just went for the Ashes. I think it's just mostly for the movement speed, attack speed. He picks up a Lincoln's next to make him really tough to kill. And, of course, this also blocks the arrow. Marana's arrows. That's really frustrating stuff. Prevents combos. Prevents a lot of stuff. No sorceries avail. Combine that with the Repel, actually. It's going to make it almost impossible to purge Razor. Nice little pick up there from Razor and Deep. See, Wisp now going to tether up and heal himself. Going to charge after them. How are they going to deal with this combination now? Repel and the Lincoln Spear going to be very difficult to deal with indeed. See, Tiny now working on Assault. He's picked up that Hyperstone. Most likely building Assault. Radiance Top Tower is under attack. Radiant structures are fortified. Track there on Undying using Solar as well. Throws down the Tombstone. Illuminate coming through, doing a lot of damage there. The Purification going to heal it up as Ammon decides to teleport back. So Tiny and Wisp made another run there on the mid lane. Didn't manage to do any damage though. Get pushed back in the end. Dyer's bottom tower has been denied. 
Marana though, there we go. Mantis style being picked up. She has got the recipe. Just waiting the old and old now. Only 700 gold away. Right now, looks like he has not managed to pick up anything new. Let's pick up the item tab at the moment. If we see... Nothing really new for any team. XXX working towards a hex, that's about it. So you here to really pick up any particularly new big items. Now the counter gank here from the die side. Oh, can they catch Tiny? Out? Tiny was backing up though. Managing to spot out the incoming trouble. This ward here, saving lives. Fishbone just harassing over the top of the trees there to clean up some neutrals. Just trying to get his farm happening any way he possibly can. Meanwhile, Tiny Whips have not been that active this game. They really have not set up that many ganks, I feel, compared to normal. Smile there, going to take out both these camps. This is easy stuff. Meanwhile, possible gank on mid. Here comes the Illuminate coming through. They're going to try and pick off the Tinker. Tinker, though, let's have a bleep dagger. And there's a Tombstone being tossed down. They miss the Illuminate, unfortunately, scaring Tinker off. And Tinker just blinks away and teleports as easy as you please in the end, ultimately. A big waste there from Fishbone as well as Wagamama. Big wasted opportunity. You can teleport to mid instantly nuking down the correct Marana. She thought she was safe in the path of all those illusions. Not realizing that she was tracked up. Sure it could toss there. Laser rockets. Easy kill. Marana, unfortunately, a bit of a glass cannon there. Agility treads, yeah, agility treads. Diffusal blade, Yasha, and a Midas does not make for a tough hero to kill. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Radiant's top tower has fallen. So they're going to try to get the bounty hunter though, hopping his BKB and teleporting out nice and easy, not too fussy at all. Has picked up the Vlad's so damage over is obviously going to be really nice in the push and the fights. The life still are in this case, not going to mean a whole lot. Tiny's just going to steal in the Ancients here, and then possibly going to teleport out in a second, although Wisp healing up there and running out of Urn Charges. I like to stack and creep here. Okay, I think their, their best plan, this is what their hope is, basically that they can get Tiny to outfarm Razor. I really don't know if that's going to be possible at this rate. If they get, keep getting picked off, then it's going to be very difficult, especially when Ammon starts to push in, as well as the rest of Verse Pro decides to start pushing and causing trouble. I think they probably should try and force some fights fairly soon, just because they don't really want to go that late. They play super passive like this. Mirana as well as Tiny get lots of time to farm. This could be some somewhat of an issue there for Virtus Pro. Go, they are actually going to pick up the Aegis now, and then I think we'll see some kind of move in there. As it looks like Razor has got room. He could drop the teleport scroller if you want him to. He's up blinding light. Nicely placed. Knocking Razor up the cliff as well as the Tinker. Although Tinker not really going to care. He's just going to teleport out throughout much. Machine's arrow is going to go in. So we see Razor teleport out. Now the Radiant team moving. Going to try and start this Roshan. There go. They're going. They will actually take out the Roshan. Nice steal there by Pulse. Very well executed. However, can they survive the counterattack? Marana now trying to get the hell out of dodge. See the Repel there on Razor. Guiding Angel also being popped there over the top of Repel. Stun goes in, doesn't do a whole lot there from T Tiny. Now the laser goes in, they pick off Keep the Light. We've already lost Omni Knight as well. However, Undying's back up. Hoss back up off the Aegis. They take out the Bounty Hunter. Now Wagamama trying to back up. Airman causing all sorts of content. We'll pick up the Tiny, maybe. Marana. No, Keep the Light also buying back there. Marana as well. Still in the fight here. And in fact, Wist now buying back, charging back in. They picked up Razor. And a double kill there for Pinoy. Nicely done there. Solrip as well, just healing up Marana before. Undying back top, back to base. Marana now with her Lantis style, her attack speed is actually quite high indeed. If she picks up a damage item next, she's going to become very, very scary indeed. So it looks like Marana's farm might actually be enough to carry them at the moment. Ammon is actually falling a little bit behind. The problem is, 
he's completely reliant on Static Link for damage. If he loses his Static Link, he doesn't get any damage. So he's going to be really careful who he tries to steal off, because if he steals the wrong guy, they'll just uh, get out of dodge there. And if he doesn't steal the damage, then in the middle of the fight, he's tanky, but he doesn't, he's not going to really kill anybody fast enough. Marana, she's looking for an arrow here on the Omni. I don't know if she's going to find it though. She finds the arrow. The question is, can she get the kill down in time? Leaps slightly the wrong, wrong way here. And NSD are trying to run. As it looks like Marana going to change her mind on this. You see Tiny Whisk, they dive in there, but they might regret this actually. They tether up as well, though Tiny. Having the tether stat there. Now he's into trouble. He's trying to run away here. Here comes Soul Rip there from the Undying. They're going to try and get rid of. The guys chase him, although the Static Link really powerful there, sucking away so much damage, blinding like getting tossed in as well. Healing and power. Razor with Static Link, not achieving a whole lot, did just a damage from around, forward for the back line, in the issue, that's what she was looking for. Structures are 45. What in there? Decay getting tossed down for good measure. Oh, the debuff there from the repel. Getting rid of the decay there. Let's see if you can tell pieces there on Tiny. Tiny going to try and get picked up here. Kenny back up time. Repel one still on the Razor there. It's a Persia on Razor. Razor down some trouble. Do we have Guardian Angel? No. Omni Knight without mana. Here we go. He can drop the heal there. Drops the heal on Am. Am now Guardian Angel as well. Can they pick him up? They need a couple of nukes here. Tiny coming in. Does the stun. Does the toss. Gets a double kill. Nicely done. Sweeping at the right moment. Tinker's been spotted. Do they have a stun there? No, Tinker will manage to port out in time. They teleport forward. It's just a short distance there. Tiny and Wiss, the shortest hop of their life. They'll teleport back in a second. And Salt Curious on... Oh, Salt on Tiny, done and dusted. I see Undying, his ult stick is done as well. Also, looks like he's working towards Blade Mouth, possibly. But here in the Marana Arrow fly out. Hits Airman. Marana popping in man style, she's going to knock off that track, although those March Machines and the laser are really hurting her up. She's going to back up, she's also picking up some damage now, picks up the Crystallis, looks like we've got a, a monkey, uh, sorry, a Bereza, a Daedalus coming out there, as there's a gem on the ground. She's spotted it, but says somebody else needs to pick it up because she doesn't want to drop any of her items, although Marana could probably justify getting underneath the Ring of Aquila next. It's not really doing a whole lot for her right now. They really want the Basilius armor that badly, they could pick it up on a different hero. Oh, Mirana just surviving the rockets flying out there. Tinker using the high ground ward, spotting him up. Now they know there's a ward there. Mirana probably say, holy crap. Mid tower will fall there. Radiant middle tower has fallen. Then back MK side here as well. Radiant Ward spotting these up, however. Gem has been picked up by Omni. I don't think anybody actually recovered the gem in time. It looks like nobody from the Radiant side actually recovered that gem and Omni Knight got the gem back instead. I don't know, we're gonna keep farming. It's been a while since we did a really good camera, but it looks like Pino may be the one tonight to do it. NS also top lane up here. Nobody really achieving a whole lot. Let's have a look at the gold graph. Now 7.5k, the dice side, they were making some headway, but Pulse, dragging it back steadily. 7.5k plus gold lead, 10k plus experience lead. Double again, easy kills there. I'm on the bottom lane, what have we got down here? Bandit. His BKB has been done for a little while. Looks like he's trying to pick up Yasher as well. Possibly just for movement speed and a little bit of extra damage. Oh, 
on mid looks a tiny whisper here. Can they find a target to teleport to though? He'll <laughs> charge in, he's got the hex down. Needs more uh, mana though before he starts perma spam I'm perma hexing people. Tombstone gets chugged down a little bit too close to the tower though, he's gonna get kicked off. Some tiny teleport in the bottom lane just to hold off his push here. Meanwhile, Bounty Hunter getting intercepted by intercepted by Keeper of the Light. There we go, Bounty Hunter right there. Fortunately though, can they beat him down? No, they can't. Bounty Hunter immediately BKBing and getting the hell out of there. Actually, Wisp has picked up a gem. Maybe they did actually manage to steal that gem. Just notice Wisp has picked one up there. Meanwhile, Marana, Daedalus is finished, and Marana is actually, wow, she is hitting really, really hard. With the Mana Burn and the Illusions mixed in, she's hitting well over. She's hitting close to 300, I feel. Well over 300, in fact. So, heal there on Bounty Hunter. Bounty Hunter copy an arrow to the face, but he will manage to survive that. No follow-up there from Marana. And now Razor building his own item here. He's picked up a Demon Edge. The question is, what is he going to go for, a Monkey Bar or a Daedalus? And the ancient enemy ancients once again. Fishbone sitting down here by himself. The Omni Knight now pausing the game. Three man stacked down here, getting ready to push the bottom lane. We've got Tinker ready to defend. Of course, Tinker always ready to defend unless he's dead. Looks like Tinker's trying to pick up Shiva's decks, which will help him out in the mana department. Nice try there from Marana. Doesn't manage to connect though. Marana, they're not finding a gank. And I think they were pinging because if she landed that arrow and suspected she'd hit, they probably would have had Tiny and Wisp teleport in there. And of course, bring in that gem. Wisp now, it appears he's working on a four star here. Of course, it's an all around really good support item. In my top lane. Bottom lane, rather. I think this Tinker, he's picked up this bling, hasn't really put it to really huge use yet. yet there's a smoke up they're going to charge the enemy jungle try and set up a fight double damage rune on the bottom rune spawn there the bounty hunter sitting around in mid they might actually just try and pick off fishbone here fishbone now about to get charged by a four man smoke gank plus possibly bounty hunter fishbone probably not going to feel so great about this there we go, there we go, they're within track speed, they're moving in there, changing their mind though. No, in fact, he knows you're there now, now he's got the backup as well from his teammates. And the Radiant side, are they going to attack here? We've got Purple, Marana swinging around from the rear, can she get an arrow off here? If she can hit Omni Knight, maybe they can set up a really good fight there, we see Ruby has actually stolen a Tying's ultimate there. As it looks like the arrow does not hit anything though, Jim also going to do a little bit of dewarding there as well. Damage. Both teams skirmishing here, jockeying for position. Both teams just trying to find an opening to set up this fight. As it looks like, uh oh, Undying out of position here, about to get run down. His teammates need to come back up ASAP. Welcome, I'm already popping his ultimate here. There's a 400 crit, throwing down the tombstone. Gonna try. And steal a bit of damage. They're also popping the blade mount to try and get rage off. And they managed to take out NS though. And here comes Tiny. Tiny going to town with his baseball bat. Takes out Razor as well. And now they're running out. Bandit the arrow goes in. Doesn't hit though. They duck back there. And third is pro called GG. Holy what? Really? 
Well, I suppose they did have a 12k deficit, but I feel like it wasn't over just yet. Then that said, that said, that is a fairly fat mana. And it looks like they're just going to call GG here, and they are going to back out. Now Small diving into the last kill. They didn't find anything, though. All that build-up, all that jockey from that one fight. I suppose, let's check for buybacks, actually. Razor. No buyback. Maybe a buyback on Bounty Hunter. Uh, he's a probably couldn't have held that with. I think they probably wouldn't have held that fight without the razor. I think I feel like why they did it's because you see what Tiny's doing now. Basically, that they feel like they wouldn't have been able to hold the fight, and pretty much Tiny would have just destroyed every single building within a 10 mile radius of this base. As you can see how quickly he's just wrecking this stuff. So there you go. Virtus Pro, they will call it GG Pulse against my expectations. Take the first match. I thought it Virtus Pro. I mean, my money was on Virtus Pro. I was wrong first mode. Of course, this was only game one of the best of three series, guys. So stay tuned. We'll be back in about five minutes with game number two.